it's wonderful to be here this morning oh it's afternoon already <laughs> with everyone um i hope everyone's excited to start painting our colorful eye colors of the soul so um what's really important to have in front of you right now is um it's very important to get get yourself a lappy or either a tissue or something um because in between cleaning of brushes you actually just want to make sure all that color has come off and that's what you're going to use the lappy for and then also just a jar or a glass of water um, that you can just rinse your brushes in and yes so while everyone's getting that please put yourself some music on get into the groove pour yourself a glass of wine and let's get ready to paint and sip and I am just going to, while you guys are grabbing that, I'm going to switch over and just share my screen here from the top so that you can see what's going on. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, there is just cameras flying all around me. Yay. I sometimes feel like it looks better on this camera than it is in real life, but this is where we're going today. All right. And um, so I'm just going to take you guys through what's inside of your box. Oops. Ah. So we're just going to pop that open. Okay. And then you'll see you have your, um, your step by step with you. And please, everyone, interact with your step by step. Look at the pictures because that's also going to guide you where you're going. And for the people that are maybe painting, much quicker than I'm going, please feel free to move on to the next step by just reading through what the next step says and looking at those pictures. And then also if I'm going to frost for some people, you can use your step-by-step -step just to revisit the step before. Inside here, I've also um, mentioned how I mix the colors, but I will be um, saying it out loud, but if you um, miss that, you can also just check this out again. Um, or just ask me, be like, hey, Lily, slow down, you know, catch me up. How did I do that color? So yes, everything's in here. And here's a little bit if you want to know more about what I do. So there we go. Okay. And then furthermore, we, if I just undo this, we have our different colors. So this is quite important. You've got two colors that seem reddish. But one is called rose, okay? It's the more pinky one. And then the other one is red. Um, we won't be using much red in today's class. There'll be like two moments where we just have a drop of red. Rose is the one we're mostly going to go for. So if you feel like it's going to confuse you completely, you can actually just put the red aside. If not, you know, use them both. It's going to be great. And then we obviously have our other two primary colors, yellow and blue and white. And then you've also got your paint brushes. So your bigger one, I will constantly be referring to your biggest brush, your smallest brush, and then your medium brush, um, just for you to know what to use. And then you've got this lekker lekker um, little, what's it called? A, no, 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 this is your apron. <laughs> there we go, that's the word. Okay, so you've got this apron and you can just pop it over your head but acrylic paint is pretty cool as soon as you as you've maced it um, and you just wipe it off with a wet cloth you're going to be good all right so what i'm going to do now is oh and of course lastly we have our canvas um okay and what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to use the tissue paper to work on so that i don't get my surface full of paint and you can do the same and then also what we've done here is we have actually used the old part of the box and I've put some cling wrap around it you don't have to put cling wrap around it but um, you can just use the box as is as a palette so you're going to need something to mix your colors on um, you can even use a paper plate or a old plastic plate or whatever. Um, it does, if, if you clean it as soon as you're done with your painting, you will still get it um, clean. Otherwise, just a box or some cling wrap over something is really good. Okay, 
I'm just going to open this. And by this time, I hope your music is jamming and you've got wine and everything is just going hunky dory on your side. And then we can get painting. So we are going to start with a um, light blue. So we're just going to mix a little bit of blue with some white. And I'll be doing that now. Let me, oh, there's my canvas. Voila. So we first want to actually just prep our canvas a little bit. And that's what we're going to be doing with our blue now. So I'm just going to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. All right. So we're going to grab this blue paint and add one blob of blue. Okay. And actually, oops, I get two parts of blue. You can actually do two blobs of blue. One, two, there we go. And the same blob, um, but only one blob of white. All right, so you ideally don't want to stick a dirty brush into your colors. So you can just rinse that off and clean it on your lappy. And there we go. So I'm going to add one blob of white to that. And also what you want to be using in this point is your biggest brush because we just want to cover the entire canvas with blue. So when you've got your color down, as you see, it's not really mixed in properly at the moment. That doesn't matter too much because we just want to get this canvas covered. All right. Okay. And already in this moment, you can start crisscrossing in different directions, but more working in a circular way, because if you see on our final piece, all of our brush strokes are going in a circular pattern around the eye. And you can start practicing that already in this moment. Okay. This may take a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, if you're feeling a bit nervous or overwhelmed and think, ah, and I seem so technical and she's a you know, pro at this, never fear, because Lauren is here. And Lauren is a very, very untrained I don't even know if artist is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it, Lily? Uh, amateur? I don't know. I believe <laughs> everyone is an artist in their own right. But yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> so I will be asking Lily questions that maybe you guys might think are a little silly or um, you might be afraid to ask but wondering yourselves. So guys, please don't be scared to ask what you think might be a simple question or something that you feel that everyone should know because trust me, I probably won't. So help me help you. Awesome. Ooh. Okay, if your paint is getting done, you can just add some more blue and some more white into your mixture and just get this. And it's covered. Come on. <laughs> now, Lily, does it matter if we've mixed a second batch of blue and it's not quite the same color as our first batch of blue? No, that is a good question. So if you've mixed another batch, as I've actually done here in the picture, and it's not the same color, you can just blend it into the rest of your blues as well. And it's actually quite lovely if it makes those... Um, Streets. Yeah, like yeah, it's like um, brush strokes, visible brush strokes on the other blue. So it's actually quite nice, and you can just blend it in and make sure that everywhere it's covered. And what you want to make sure is, if I'm painting here in the middle now, for you guys to see those little white bits coming through, we actually want to just cover that up. So. At first, we might be adding quite a lot of paint just to get that covered. 
And also what helps um, when we are um, just filling in our canvas with one color before we start placing our eye and so on, is that um, we're sealing the canvas so that it doesn't steal too much over the other colors. And it also is a smoother area to paint on. So our other strokes will flow a lot more easy, easier than um, we're on a canvas that you, for instance, haven't prepped or primed um, or just put a layer of color on before. So yeah, <laughs> there we go. So I am nearly done covering my canvas. And once again, moving in different directions and trying to create more strokes going in a circular way around where my eye is eventually going to be. Adding a ding ding. And if you want to, you can also um, fill in the sides of your canvas if you like. You don't have to do that now. It can be at the end or during it. Some people like their picture to continue onto the sides. Other people paint the, the sides of the canvas um, white or black. So it's just whatever your preference is. And you can do it. Okay, so my canvas is pretty filled. And you also see here, I've got some clearer marks of darker blues and whites in there. If you want more of that, we can just add a little bit more of blue strokes into that and then it just lovely blends in there and now I'm just grabbing some white straight out of the thing and I'm just adding some of that in but yeah doesn't really matter too much at the moment because we're going to start filling in and covering this blue with lovely colors okay so I hope everyone is ready with their blue and their canvas is covered. Um, I think I'm going to give you a moment still while I am just prepping the next step. So after you've covered your canvas, very important to please rinse your brush. You want to rinse it in between colors, otherwise it's going to become like a really muddy, um, <laughs> like it, it looks like baby poo if you, if you don't <laughs> rinse your brush in between steps. So very important. Um, we don't want baby poo on our canvas. Okay. And if you've cleaned it um, we or rinsed it, we're just going to clean it on our cloth or our lappy to get all that color out. Okay. I'm going to set this big brush aside because we're not going to use it in our next step. Our next step, you can use your um, medium brush and we're just going to use some white for this step. Okay. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to dilute some white onto my um, palette. And so I've got a little bit of white there, but I'm adding a few drops of my water to that just to make it a bit more runny and more translucent um, because we're now going to split our canvas into four equal quarters well quarters are equal but yeah <laughs> um, so there we go I might want need it to be a bit more runny so I'm just going to add a little bit more water okay so you kind of need a major the middle point there if i hold my two hands like that ding ding i feel like that's my middle i can do dot there up here hold my two hands there where my thumbs come together that also seems like the middle mm, somewhere there i'm just gonna stand up to give it a look all right there we go what makes life a lot easier is when you stand back and then look at the picture so if you are struggling to see where you need to put your few dots stand a bit back check it out and then you can just pull a line it doesn't have to be too straight all right there we go boom 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 
And the next one, our horizontal line. Now I'm seeing it, that one might have to lift a little bit. Okay, here we go. So now we've got our quarters. Okay, there's gonna be some blue paint on your brush because your background won't be dry just yet. So yes, you want to just rinse it off again. So we're gonna keep on using the white. Okay, I'm gonna give you a moment um, for anyone to ask me to slow down and or if you're ready to move on, if I can see a thumbs up because the next step is quite important for the rest of the um, for the rest of the painting. So very important. Is everyone ready? Can I get a thumbs up if you have your quarters down? I'm seeing a uh, thumbs down. Okay, I'm just going to give you a while still. There's a thumbs up. Nice. Okay. There we go. So should we give everyone another minute or how are we have to make I'm seeing, well, I saw one thumbs down. There's only one thumbs down. So, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain where to place your first circle. And then I will give you guys a moment and then I'll explain it again. So for the people that um, are not ready to start painting the outlines of the eye, don't worry about it. I will explain how to do it again. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do now, very important to check on your um, step-by-step -step where that circle is. And if you look on your step-by-step, -step, the iris of the, uh, of the eye, so the iris is the, the color part, you know, the eye that's either a blue eye, a green eye or a brown eye. So that iris is slightly to the, your bottom left. Because if we put it smack bam in the middle, the, the composition of the artwork um, just doesn't really work so well for me. So um, yeah, so we're just gonna drop it slightly lower, okay? And um, it's just gonna be a nice round, round, round circle that we're gonna do there. And it is about four fingers wide. So what I'm gonna do to start with is on my line, I'm putting my um, one finger just next to my vertical line. Vertical, yes. All right, and then the other three on the other side. And I'm just doing a dot there, boom, okay. And then on the other side of my hand, boom, doing a dot there. So that is how wide I wanna go with my eye. But also note that I wanted to drop lower into this bottom quarter, bottom left quarter. Okay, so I'm going to let it curve to there. Right, and it is about, so if it's four, wide, four fingers wide, it needs to be four fingers high. So I went a bit wide there maybe, all right. Cool, so four fingers high, and I'm going, once again, one finger above the horizontal line and the rest below. And then we just bring all of those dots together like that. And you try your best to create a nice round circle. One is not looking too round at the moment. Um, I'm just gonna add more white so that you guys can also see where I'm going. Okay. Now, Lily, if our circle is not quite as circle as it should be, or if it's a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, is that okay? So if it's a little bit smaller or bigger, then it doesn't matter. All your eye at the end will just be either a bigger eye or a smaller eye. So that's perfect. 
but you actually really, really want to try and get it as round as possible. So I would suggest you turn your canvas to the side which your hand curves. As you go around, you let it curve as I'm doing now in the video and you just let it fall into that curve and then you should get it as round as possible. But at the moment, if it's not perfectly round, we can always fix it a little bit later. So we're gonna be okay. Okay, so that is my circle. I am just gonna run through that again for those that might, may have missed it. So you wanna make sure your circle is just as wide as it is high. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So mine is about, it's a little bit more than four fingers up and four fingers wide like that when I put it down there. And then I moved it just more to the lower left-hand side. Okay. And what you can also see is if you want to be like really perfect about it, there where my horizontal line crosses over there, you'll actually see that the cross is like that. So you can see that that tiny amount of the corner of my top right-hand corner is the smallest bit in the circle. The second smallest is my top left-hand corner. The third smallest is this um, right bottom <laughs> quarter and then my left bottom quarter is my biggest one. Cool. Up until this point with this circle, do we have any questions? Any questions, guys? Big, small, don't worry. Please let us know. It's looking good. Okay. Well, we've got crickets, so that must be a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> happy days. Now everyone looks happy and so busy. Cool, guys. I'm happy to see just all these brushes flying through the air. Okay, so our next step is we want to create the curve that goes, crosses at the top of the iris and then also the curve at the bottom. We're gonna start with the top curve, still using white paint. And at this point, I think you actually wanna use your smallest brush. So if you weren't using your smallest brush to put down the circle, please use your smallest brush now because these are quite detailed bits. Okay. And what you want to do is about, yeah, let's say about three fingers to your left hand side, okay, and just below your horizontal line. So I'm not doing a dot on my horizontal line after three fingers, I'm moving a bit below. So it is about one and a half fingers below. So if I measure one, two, three fingers, and then here, one and a teeny bit, there, that's where I'm going to do one dot. This moment doesn't have to be perfect because we all have different shapes of eyes. If it's kind of in the same area, that's good. Okay, but it needs to be three fingers away because we need some area for the white of our eye to be because we're moving across here. Okay. And this, your left hand side needs to be a tiny bit bigger than your right hand side. So we've got three fingers here. That means we've got two and a half on this side. Okay. And you can add your dot. On some people's eyes, if I can quickly show you here, if I were to pull a straight line from that corner, on today, we'll actually see that this corner is slightly lifted. Some people's eyes, their corner is slightly lifted. Some people's eyes, the two corners are in line. To make it easy for you, let's put both our corners. Sorry about that. I kicked this camera. One moment. 
there we go. Okay, so, um, so for today, we're going to put those two dots in line with each other. Okay. Now we've got our two dots where we're going and we want to cut the top area of our iris. Do you see that we can't see the entire iris here at the top because the top lid actually cuts through it and that you'll also be able to see on your steps over there um, that the circle is actually going beyond our top lid. Okay, so it's going to cut round about there and you can even put that mark in for yourself. So do a dot like that, or even pull a line through there. All right. And now we add with a lovely curve, like a bunny jumping over a hill. Boing. <laughs> and we're just adding a curve that is crossing along the eye. You can at any moment Go and check your angles on your step-by-step. -step. So if you take the picture of the eye on your step-by-step, -step, you can actually go measure, is that angle correct? Because you see on the sides of the iris, your angle is quite steep. But as soon as it gets to the iris, it's nearly a straight um, horizontal line with a slight curve. So please make a note of that and check it out. Here's a strong um, angle. And then just over there, we start slowly dropping the angle and we move across. Okay, great. Any questions on our top lid that we've just put down? Okay, please note that the two sides are nearly, nearly, nearly exactly the same size. Your um, left-hand side is just like a pinky more or bigger than your right-hand side. So what you can do is you can actually put your two um, hands down like that and just check it out. Okay. Cool stuff. All right, and now we are going to add in our bottom lid. All right, I'm going to lower that a bit. Um, and so what's important here is on our right hand side, it's just an echo of what we've done at the top, but it changes when we get to our left hand side. And what you want to see here as well is that the iris is just just touching the bottom of the iris is touching the lid where this one has cut off a bit of this iris this one is just going along that line that you've already put there all right so i'm just going to continue this line that i've put there and i'm pulling it up until that point like that okay and here is where it might get a little bit more tricky, is we want to connect that to that, at that corner side where the fleshy bit of the eye is gonna be to the rest of that. And note that in everyone's eyes, it first curves around the fleshy bit, and then it curves a little bit up and it goes down and it continues the normal line. Okay, and it is only a tiny bit. So we're gonna curve around just a little bit like that. And mine is actually even smaller than my pinky. So you can check that that line is not bigger than your pinky. And then you start curving in slightly. There we go. And then we move down normally with the eye. Oops, okay. So I'm realizing that my eye may need to stand back. Stand back, check your eye. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, no, that's fine. Fine for now. Cool stuff. Any questions up until this point? Okay. So I am now going to put in the eyebrow. And then as soon as I've done that, I would like anyone that has a question and wants me to just double check their eye to please send me a picture of your canvas, WhatsApp it to me, and then I will address that over the video call. So for instance, um, Lawrence just asked me about her eye and I realized that this part, her right part of her eye is a little bit small. So it would seem like her eye is peeking more to the right side and we actually want our eye looking straight at us so i've helped her out with that and yeah so if you um want to just pop me a quick whatsapp you can go ahead steve is going to put my um telephone number or my whatsapp number on um the chat bar at the moment so that's cool too but let's get going with the brow okay so what we want to do here is measure about a hand above, or let's say four fingers, that looks better. Yeah, four fingers above your top lid. So that's not from the top of that iris. You can actually, if your paint is still wet, you can delete that, take that away. <laughs> okay, take that top of your iris away so it doesn't confuse you and you have just your lid line. So about four fingers from your lid line, just gonna put a little dot there because that is where your eyebrow is gonna cross. Now, I'm just gonna grab a canvas that I've done about halfway to this point. Okay, we'll get you later. I need you guys to note that the eyebrow actually passes if i put a line in that area your eyebrow passes that line what we tend to do is only start our eyebrows there and if you look at people's faces it actually passes it and then also note your eyebrow also goes much further down and away from where your eye goes your curve actually starts just before the edge of your eye Okay, so that's important lines to look at when we're doing the eyebrows. Cool. And now you can also measure your angle. So we've got, we've just put a dot there, which is over there. And we've got our angle. And we also know that the curve needs to start just before there. So if I go straight up here, then I know my curve needs to start just before that. So that would be around about there. Okay. And let's check our angle. So we measure our angle like that. A ding, a ding, ding. That looks good. All right, now we've got our dots. Ding, ding, ding. We pull the line up and it goes quite straight. And remember, it goes beyond our eyes. So we pull it a bit further. And there the line goes, ding, a ding, a ding. And then it starts round about there, starts to curve down. Okay, so just grabbing some more white paint and we're curving down and it is passing the eye. Now what you wanna note is that most eyebrows go wider, closer to the nose and as they go to the side of the face, they start to thin out. It's important to do so we're just gonna thicken this up thicken it rather to the top than to the bottom okay and we are just gonna add more there and as we go on start to curve it in and make it thinner so ta -da -da -da. Lily, yes I have a quick question uh, from Sara Lee. She says, how many fingers? So how many fingers above the eye are we doing the eyebrow? So I did mine about four fingers. So if I go once again from that top lid that we've put down, so not where your iris line would be, 
for that top lid over there, I'm going one, two, three, four, and I'm just popping that line down. But please note that the eyebrow does move a little bit higher on your right hand side of the eye and then it starts tipping down. Okay, so if I also go from, oh, this is lovely that it works out. So from your fleshy part, this corner, left hand corner of your eye, it's also about four fingers, maybe a little bit more. So that area as I'm moving along here should be the same um, width all the way. And then in this area, it moves out wider. Okay, hope that made sense. <laughs> cool. And what you can do now, very, very important, is to put your pupil in right smack bam in the middle of your eye. Okay, so how you're gonna do that is you're gonna start filling it in with still white paint at the moment. And here you actually wanna sand back a little bit just to check it out that it's in the right spot. And you want to put your pupil in. Okay, you can actually make it bigger than you think because we will be adding in the colors later and so on. So what the trick is about this pupil is that all around the pupil, you want it to be the same size, except here at the top, because remember you've cut a bit off that iris. So if you still got your iris line, you can measure it out there. So what I'm realizing is mine actually has to lift a little bit there at the top and around. Okay. So do we almost want it touching that top line? Or it's still going to be below our top eyelid line? Yes, right? yes. There's still going to be some space there, but just less than at the bottom. But when I say less, it's going to be like a millimeter less because you only cut off about a millimeter of your, um, of your iris. Okay. Got it. Lily, if you wouldn't mind just repeating the steps of how to do the eye for us and giving us everyone one more chance just to catch up, maybe just repeating the, the iris part again. Okay, perfect. So um, we've now put our circle down, all right? Doesn't matter too much where you've put it down, but ideally more to your lower left hand side. So we've got that done, which was just our circle. Then we measured about four fingers on our left hand side. And we measured about three and a little bit on our right hand side and made two dots. And we curved that around to um, create our top lid. And then we curved it around at the bottom, but slightly curved it in here on the left hand side to create um, that little fleshy part in the corner of our eye. Okay, and then after we've had our whole eye down, we measured four fingers from our top lid and made a mark of the eyebrow. And then once again, four fingers from this corner. And then we place our brow down noting that it passes the eye at the top, if we were to pull a line there, and also passes this right-hand side of the eye. So if I pull the line there, it goes past that. What you can also do is refer to your reference and in your steps, and just measure that angle, because the angle stays the same. At the moment, mine has dropped a little bit, so I might even want to soften it out even more and bring it there to the top. Okay, and that angle over there, lovely. So yes, um, okay, let's move on to the next one. I'm sure everyone's got their eye down, it's looking good. And that's, this, that's the most important part. If you've got this down, whatever we do from now on, we're just gonna add a bunch of colors dancing around it 
and um, you can if you if you like less yellow and more green, you can do that. If you like more blue, add more blue. So we're just gonna play as long as your brush strokes are moving around your eye on the sides. Okay. So next step is we are gonna mix some yellow. All right. And um, so we're just gonna use some yellow straight as is out of our uh out of our little paint bottle <laughs> okay and uh we're gonna mix a little bit of white into that all right so i've got my yellow down here there we go and i am just gonna mix I'm just gonna mix some white into that. So one blob of yellow and one blob of white, maybe two blobs of white. It depends how light you wanna go. I think mine can be a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna add more white to that. Ooh. Okay, so we've got some yellow and now in our top left-hand corner, we're just gonna blob that down. So, and as you can see on your picture, that's where you're going to add your yellows. So here at the top, blob, 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 blob. And you can maybe leave like a little bit of gaps in between because you want those brush strokes to be seen. So boom, boom, down there. And now here at the bottom, note that it kind of also curves in here. There we go. And we fill it in down to the bottom of our canvas. Okay, and it goes around there, and then it moves up here. This area needs to be a darker color because that is where your eye dents in. This builds up to your nose. This yellow, what we're painting, is actually your cheekbone. All right, so boom, 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 we add some yellow there, and then, we can, well, actually, you don't have to rinse your brush even. So you keep the yellow on your brush and just like a tiny, tiny, tiny drop of rose, we're going to use on our brush. I'll just show you how that's going to work. So boom, like that. All right. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit on your brush. And you can mix that in a little bit there, but get it around on your brush, and you're just gonna add a few strokes into that yellow while it's still wet, and not much, just like ding, ding, ding. And then on this side, ding, ding. And a little bit more ding. And maybe just a tiny bit more. <laughs> okay, at the top there. So when we're mixing it in, it becomes a little bit more orangey, peachy colors happening there that's wonderful that's what you want and then you can add a tiny drop of white and bring some strokes in there at the bottom here of your canvas so maybe just a little bit and I'm going really soft guys I'm barely touching the canvas with my brush um because I just want to softly blend that in to my artwork okay boom 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 We've got our yellow down, bam, bam. Okay, and now we, let me just check which color I wrote next, because I don't want, I want to follow your steps as they are. Um, now we're gonna mix a nice sea green. So that's always fun. <laughs> it's one of my favorite colors, you know, like a teal color or a sagey color or a sea green color. All of those are really great. So um, I'm just gonna rinse my brush off, but it's all right if there's still a little bit of yellow because we are, actually no, there's rose in your brush. Please, please, please make sure it's really clean. Otherwise we are gonna have baby poo on our canvases and <laughs> no, we want don't that. want that. No <laughs> one wants that. All right. So there we go. So you can even use some of the yellow that you have already. And if you have some blue that's wet and left, mix that in as well. I'm just gonna grab some blue here. 
Okay, so mine's a bit of the lighter blue that we've already mixed. And I'm just gonna add some of the yellow to that. So one blob, even a bit more. And you can choose when you actually like the color, when it's right. I want it to be a nice sea green. So I actually need more yellow out of my jaw. Into that. There we go. Hey, that's happening. Oh, yes. Look at that lovely color. It's so great. <laughs> okay. So to that, I've just added some blue, some white, and quite a bit of yellow to get this lovely sea green. Okay, we are now using our big brush to fill in these spaces. If you are using too small brush, you are gonna take forever. So please use your big brush. <laughs> All right, we've got that green. And now we just wanna add it to certain places of our eye. So we see a little bit there at the top of our eyebrow. There's here below our eyebrow over there, underneath on the side there and here where the nose is going. So that's where we're gonna add. So we're gonna start here at the top of our eyebrow, just do a few strokes in there, one, two, and here at the bottom of the eyebrow, we're gonna move some sea green in there and maybe just a stroke there for funsies and then a stroke there at the bottom. And you can really just place your stroke down and leave it. It's gonna seem disjointed at this moment and as you start adding the strokes, but the more strokes you add, the more it's gonna start coming together. All right, so I'm gonna add some of that sea green in this corner like that. There we go, it's just such a lovely color. I wanna put it everywhere. And then we've got it down here beneath the eye. Okay, and then some going around the eye there. Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment to snapshot this with your eyes. Okay, and I'm going to quickly just go through that. Boom, boom, two strokes above the eyebrow on that side, two below here, one above there. Okay, two on this side, maybe even a little on there. Okay, and one below here, and quite a lot of green we want to add there where the nose is gonna be, and we put a stroke there. Now you can wipe that paint off your brush and then just give it a good rinse. And we are gonna mix a, um, more of a like clear green. So you are just gonna use some yellow, a blob of yellow and one blob of blue. And I'm just gonna see what that looks like because we might add some white to that. So I'm adding a blob, where am I? See there, a blob of blue and a blob of yellow, mixing in. Okay, we're getting a nice grassy green. And I just wanna add some white to that. Okay, so that's your green color and we just want to add a few little bits of this on our canvas. So we're going to add one going in here, flowing out of your sea green into that. Hopefully your sea green is a little bit wet still because then you can move it in. And another stroke there. And then we've got a stroke on this side. So it will be either like slowly moving over the sea green that you've already got um, or just next to it and then blending them in on the sides. Because our yellow is slowly moving into the green, moving into the sea green, moving into blue. That's the idea. And then you can add another stroke here at the top of your eye. And yeah, another stroke here in that area. 
above the brow and lower the brow here a little bit more. Okay, and another stroke over there. All right, so now we've got our green down, still looking a bit disjointed, it's completely fine. We are moving towards this. Okay, now you can mix. Um, Lily, if you wouldn't mind yes. just showing me where to put that tree, grass, lovely, vibrant green again, okay. just so I don't miss anything out. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to recap that grassy green. So I've added it on this side where our nose, the way the curve is of our nose, all right? And then just below the eye and then um, on our left hand side and then also just below the eye on the right hand side a little bit here into this right hand corner then just below the brow into those sea green bits that we put there and then i added one stroke at the top here above our um, right side our left side of the brow and then also above the right side of the brow okay Cool stuff. Now we want to mix a little bit of a, no, oh, another uh, question, sorry. All right, guys, we're just gonna take a quick break there to let everyone catch up. Okay. So just to recap, we have added our yellows. We've added a hint of rose, correct? Yes. Sea green and then our grass green. Yes. All right. Guys, while everyone is catching up on that and taking a break and maybe a sip of much needed wine, mm. Lily, what's new with you? <laughs> so you've hosted this a couple of times. Most of our regulars already know you. They know your artwork. They know some of the things you've done in the past. What are you focusing on at the moment? Um, so, mm. okay, at the moment I have like a secret art series that I'm working Ooh. on so I can't say too much about that oh I can just on. say like friends here I can just say new experimental art on its way so I'm very excited about that and it's going to be interesting um uh, it might not be as aesthetic as my other things or as figurative but um yes definitely something in the loop so that's exciting. And then I've also started a few more classes that I'm giving. So I give um, personal ongoing art classes where you actually focus on conceptualization and really like making skillful art pieces. Um, and I give these classes on Monday evenings and Friday mornings. And then that's in Cape Town. Um, and I also give those classes on Tuesday evenings in Stellenbosch. So, so that's actually been keeping me quite busy. And I've also started teaching at a Montessori school on Wednesday mornings. So my time to create art is getting a little bit less, but it, I am enjoying it. I love teaching and yes, so yeah. Well, as we all know here at Paintings, that we are a phenomenal teacher. So those kids are very lucky to have you at the Montessori School. Yay. <laughs> and guys, if you do want to keep up to date on everything Lily Brennan, please do check out her Instagram page. Steve will be putting her handle at Lily Brennan Fine Art into um, the chat box in a moment. So please keep an eye out on her so that we can see what the special surprises you've got coming up that you won't tell us about yes lady. okay that'd be awesome <laughs> and also and um, if everyone's painting with us wants to post the picture on insta and tag me in it so i can see what it looks like that'd be really really awesome at the end of our class that'd be great absolutely guys post pictures between and after please add us to your stories add us to your posts it really means a lot for us um, to get these pictures out there so people can see what we're all about. And you stand a chance to win a prize. Oh, <laughs> what? So it's pretty much selfish on your behalf, really. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who does post pictures of this event um, and tags Lily Brennan Fine Arts and tags us, Painting Sip Set A, will be put into a draw at the end of this week and you could win a kit for next 
month's event. So oh, that'd be great. Please tag us. Yay. <laughs> Um, All right, guys. Lily, do you want to check if we've got thumbs up? Do you want to check if everyone's ready for us? Yes. Uh, can I move on to the adding the next color? Is everyone all right? Can I get a thumbs up? Are you guys ready? Oh, I'm seeing thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Anna. And everyone else. Is there anyone else? Melissa? Are you good? Melissa, are you ready to go? How are you feeling? Give us a yay or nay. <laughs> she might be nodding, but I only see five pictures at a time. So I'm just scrolling through. She makes a comment on the chat. Which find. Okay. All right, guys. Awesome. So I am, now I just feel personally, this is not in your notes, but personally on my picture, I feel that there isn't enough blue. So I have mixed, or what we can do now is we can take our sea green and just add another blob of blue to that, maybe even two blobs. Um, just to get it a bit more blue that we can add here and there into our picture. So I'm actually going to add another blue blob to my sea green. And you can look here to see what color I'm mixing. And yeah, as long as it's kind of like a lightish blue with a tint of green in it, that would be great. Okay. There we go. I quite like that color, but you can do any color that you actually like. <laughs> um, okay, so now we are just gonna add that and I'm just gonna stand back a little bit and I suggest you do that as well, just to get some perspective on the artwork. And I feel like in this area, just at the top over there, that might need a little bit of blue. And as I put that down, it actually seems a bit dark for me. So I'm going to add some white to that. Okay. Even more white to that there. So I've added two blobs of blue to my sea green and then also two blobs of white to get that color. Cool. Okay. So now I'm just going to go over that line that I've just made. Oh, lovely. That's much lighter. So I want a little bit more of these bluey colors coming across. So I've added one just below my brow here and we can go just above our brow there and in the top right-hand corner there, moving out over there. And in this corner over here, um, just in the middle of our canvas on our right hand side. I'm going to add some blue going in there and a little bit over there. And below our eye here, like that. Okay, so just kind of where you feel you want to add a little bit more blues, please go for it. And yeah, next color we're going to mix to add is our dark, dark blue, just as is. Okay, so we're not actually mixing it. Um, there we go. I'm just spreading it out. And there's maybe a bit of sea green in my brush that I'm just allowing to be taken over with this dark blue. Okay, so this is the important part. All these other little strokes don't matter too much, but what's important is the areas that we are actually darkening up. Okay, and that would be, hmm, wait. Yes, okay, that's fine. That would be just 
above your eye in this area. Okay, we're going to leave a little space for the top of our lid line that we're going to put in in a moment. And we can put a stroke on the side there for it to be pulled out and moving in here below the brow. And some at the top there, just a few strokes. Okay. And you can put a tiny bit down there, but we're still going to add a little bit of a brow line in that area, oh, a lid line. Okay, you can even move across there like that. Okay. And yeah, just starting now that it is coming together slowly. And so you can rinse your brush out. And I think what's going to be important for our next stop is to use that same color, but our smallest brush. It's going to be quite important. Okay. Any questions at this point? Great. <laughs> cool. So we are once again just using that dark blue and our smallest brush. And we can start with our pupil. So filling in our pupil with that color. Just to make it darker, we, might, we are gonna add another layer of a darker color to it to make it even darker as soon as that's dry. For now, that's good. Lily, could you just repeat where you put the dark blue again around the eye for us? Okay, so we are going to be adding a lid above your eye. So I just put a stroke above where that lid would be. So that's already like adding a shadow to your eye. So it's just above your top eye part over there, I don't know what shall we call it, like the top of your iris, there is a space and then there's one line there. And then we've got in this area, just below your brow, filling that in there. So I put about two strokes there. And then I put one stroke on the side there um, with a lighter one going down. We can even make that a bit more clear just so you guys can see. There we go. And then I just put one stroke down here at the bottom. Okay. Cool. Lily, as we go forward with these steps, do you think we could move just a little bit slower for some of our guests who are just struggling a bit, whether it's with color mixing or adding it? Yeah. If Well, if there's time, I don't know when's our cuddle, then I'm happy. We're all right. We're still good with time. Okay. And I just want to say to everyone, don't worry to put them in the perfect spots where I'm putting them. If you feel like adding reds and pinks and yellows into the shades going around your eye, do that. What's going to be important is the detail we actually add on our eyes. And what's important is to have light here and light there and dark here in that area so to shade in different colors that's completely fine at the end i'll mention that again at the end you can even only bring in some darkness here and there and some lightness in these two areas and then you'll be good so um yeah don't worry too much about putting colors perfectly down this part should just be fun and like Din -din -din -din. oh i feel that needs some um, like sea green and that needs some yellow and that needs some red. So, yes. Okay. Um, I just want to point out something that I accidentally missed in the step before is to paint in our lids. So our lid at the top, and then also that wrinkle line that would be at the bottom. 
So I'm so sorry about that, but it's fine to even add it in now. Um, I just wanted to mention that in case someone's moving with the steps and I was like, ah, oh, she didn't do that. <laughs> so um, to be able to do that, I just want you all to measure about a finger's width the, at the top of your eye, like that. And now you're gonna move down with that roundabout to just, yeah, beyond your iris over there. And then it's gonna start curving in smaller. And that's where you are gonna pull a, the line of your lid. Just like that. So what you'll realize is that it goes small on the sides and begin, begin, begin moving to the top. And you actually wanna make sure that it goes bigger and the biggest area is right in the middle of your eye. So if I were to pull a line down the middle of my eye like that, that is where the biggest part of my lid needs to be. And as it goes down here, it goes smaller. It's got like a bit of a rugby shape to a ball, a rugby ball shape to it. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, is everyone all right? Can I move on? We're just gonna start outlining the eye with blue. Can I get a thumbs up if you're good? Yay. Guys, how about while we're here, why doesn't everyone put on their cameras if you feel comfortable and show Lily your painting um, as far as it is now? So guys, put on your cameras, hold up your paintings. Let's see how everyone's going at the moment. Oh, there we go, that's looking good. And Gabby, yeah, you guys, that's looking awesome. Well done. Da is it Daphne? Great. Lo Lauren, Lorraine, very, very cool. Cora, amazing. Look at you guys. Oh, wonderful. Cool, Lorraine, awesome. I'm just popping down here. Oh, oh these are great. Mia and Michelle. And, um, oh, now everyone's disappeared. Sorry, okay, here we go. Cool, we've got, yeah, Anna, that's looking awesome. Karen, really cool. Crystal, nice. Lynette and Renata, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Loving your greens. And is it Tanya, lovely. JC Marie, awesome, awesome. Natasha, very cool. And Amy, that's looking good. And Renata, yes, I'm seeing yours. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Sarah Lean, very, very cool. Yay, guys, you're doing so well. See, you all are on top of this. Awesome, great. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna move along slowly. It's not a difficult step. So if you're not there yet, don't worry about it. Um, we're using our dark blue and we are just going, we're just filling in the lines that we already have. So using your dark blue and this at this point, you can really start fixing your eyes proportions if you needed to so remember to try and keep both sides a, a similar um, size you know of the white area of your eye so I started with the pupil just now and now I'm moving into my iris and you don't want to lose that lovely shape that round 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 shape so feel free to once again turn your canvas Okay, you can even turn it upside down and just add in those lines. There we go. Okay, once again, noting that the top part of your iris 
is cut off quite a bit. So um, like that. Okay. And now we just want to add in the top line. So once again, you can dilute your blue a little bit just to make it more runny. Um, there we go. And we're filling in our top line. And then remember our little curve coming in there on the side of the eye and going down. There we go. And what you can start, what you can add in this little bit is that fleshy part over there. So where it curves in, you actually wanna put a little curve in the corner there. I hope you guys can see that. I'm just gonna lift this a little bit. So do you see in that little corner over there, that's that fleshy part in your eye. Is I think it's your tear gland, yeah? Yeah, yeah. your tear gland, yeah. So that's where your tear gland sits and that's important, that little bit. So it's gonna make your eye look realistic and then we just go over those lines. What you can do now is um, actually mix a little bit of rose into some blue, okay. So it's gonna just become more darker than that blue as is. So it's a quite a nice dark purple, see there? And we're just gonna do our eyebrow in that color for now. So we know where it is and then our face is gonna start coming together. You can actually for this use a bigger brush. Oh my goodness, this small brush is going nowhere. Please use a bigger brush. <laughs> okay. So that's some blue and a little bit of rose. Into that. There we go. And we're just going to pull our eyebrow along, going thinner, thinner, thinner to the side. There we go. Okay. If it's fading into the blue behind it, make it a little bit more rosy to pop out so that you know where you've put it. So you can just add rose straight onto that. But if you can see it, just leave it that lovely color. All right, so we've got the shape of our eye back down and we can use the same rosy color and just fill in our pupil with that same color again. Just make it really, really nice and dark. All right, there we go. Leka, leka. And remember to rinse your brush. Okay. And stand back, stand back, stand back, check it out, put it further away. Something always looks different if you put it further away from you. So then you might see, oh, my pupil's a little bit skew or this and that, and then you just fix it up. So for instance, my pupil is really a little bit skew. And I'm just gonna add it, a lovely curve around there. Okay. Nice. So we have got that down with that same color. We are just going to add in um, our wrinkle lines. So they are usually below the eyes and we're not going to do too many just here and there. So with again, um, some blue and a little bit of rose at the corner of your eye here with your smaller brush, we're just going to add some darkness in there with this purple like that all right and then we just want to follow that curve below the eye here with that purple so we're following the curve and just making that curve around to the side there 
Okay, and that's also about a finger's width below your eye. Okay, there we go. And we have some blue from earlier that's fading in there. So that's cool too. Now our eye's taking shape, guys. We are nearly there. <laughs> um, I'm just seeing that on mine, my eye is not dropping early enough. So I'm just going to fix this point. It needs to, this needs to be its highest point here in the middle of my eye. And then it needs to start dropping down. Okay, so I'm going to follow my inside line that I'm adding there. But we're going to fix that when we do the lid now. All right. Any questions about the eye, the pupil, the lines we've added? We've basically just gone over our white lines of our eye with darker blue. We've added in our top lid just with a light white so that we see where it is. We've darkened our eyebrow with a bit of a rosy purple color. And with that same purple color, we've added a little bit of darkness in our right-hand corner of the eye. And just a finger below added a line curving in the same way as the bottom line of our eye, as our little wrinkle part below our eyes. Me, we can get it. <laughs> All right, Mel, while we give people time to catch up on these steps that we've just gone over, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit more about you painting with wine? Now, this is what we're doing, guys, where we paint and sip. Lily actually uses um, wine as her medium for painting. Okay, yeah. So um, what I do, it's usually for corporate team buildings and things where I take a group of people to a wine farm where we do a wine tasting. And then during the wine tasting, we do two creative expression, expressive exercises just to get everyone comfortable with the medium. And then I take them through a step-by-step -step of how to create their own artwork using red wine as the medium. So we work on watercolor paper and um, I bring along wine that we can then paint with um, and then the wine farm offers fantastic wine that we can drink. <laughs> so yeah, so that is that is what I do with groups. And then personally, on a personal level, I um, use it as one of my main mediums. And if you go visit my Instagram or my website, you'll see more examples of red wine paintings. Awesome. Now, nice. we are actually in talks of possibly collaborating with Lily at Warwick Wine Estate to start doing these painting in wine mediums. And we're so excited because, I mean, as we all know, Lily is just too damn talented for her own good. <laughs> and we cannot get enough of having you here with us at Paint and Sip. I mean, guys... How great is she from your charismatic personality to your absolute talent when it comes to teaching? You are one of the best, Lil. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Yes, I'm very excited about the, the Warwick um, opportunity. I can't wait to have um, bigger groups doing wine paintings. I think it's going to really be fun. So excited about that. Awesome. We're so excited to be moving forward with you into this new venture. Yay. So hopefully, guys, if you're interested, please do check out Lily's page. Check out her website if you're interested in booking her for these kind of events or joining onto um, her events that she hosts. And we will keep you posted in the future, the near future, about when we might be doing such things with Lily. Yay. Awesome. Okay, so everyone ready to move along? Can I see some thumbs up in the air? Put your hands up in the air. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Yay, I'm so happy. Woo, we've got some dancing people. I like it. Yes. 
Getting groovy. Okay. Awesome stuff. Okay, I just want to scroll back. Nice. All right, we are now going to move along to just the top of our lid. Um, and yeah, so what you can use for that is um, your smaller brush. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fill the entire lid with some white paint at first. Okay, so, and we're starting here in the middle and we're just filling some white paint in there. And it's okay if you get to the sides and your paint gets less. That's good because you don't want too much white paint on the side areas. All right, what's a really, really, really important to remember with the lid is that that area at the top is where our light source is hitting it. So that area there is going to be your lightest bit moving down to the corners. It's going to get darker, 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 darker. As you can see on our eye over here, that's our lightest bit and moving down, it's getting darker, darker, darker and on this side as well. Okay, so I'm first adding just some white there on my lid, liquor, liquor. And now, remember that purple color that we mixed? We added some blue and some rose together and I can do that again. Here's some blue and some rose. We're just going to mix that together to get like a nice dark purpley color. And that is what we're going to add in the corners of our eye. So we're just mixing that in. There we go. Okay, once again, smallest brush. All right, so you can have kind of control of what you are doing. And we are going to mix that in. And what you'll realize now is that that white is still wet underneath your um, underneath your purple and it'll start mixing in and that's actually what you want. So, and you're not gonna go all the way. We're gonna leave a little bit of white there at the top of our lid and we're gonna move on to the side here. And we're just bringing in that lovely dark color there. And at this moment, what's really important as well is that there's a dark shadow above your lid. If your blue stroke that you put down earlier is not there, you can add a blue stroke there so that it looks like this lid. Okay, and we're just adding that in there. Lovely. Okay, so do we want these corners to be very purple and very dark or to be kind of what's... No, they need to kind of fade out. So um, as long as it's darker in that corner, moving up, going lighter, 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 like mine is not so much at the moment. And I'm going to show you how to lighten it out. So we're just going to grab some more white while this purple is wet and we're just going to blend it in like that. And we can go down here and just blend it in like that. And work it up. Like that. And if you want it to be more rosy, you can even add a few rosy strokes to that. So for instance, I'm just going to add one, two, three, four rosy strokes on that side. And then on this side, I'm just gonna add some more rosy strokes there. I will lift this up to the camera so you guys can see it better in a bit. And this will just give it some dimension. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna lift that up for you guys to see. So I've added dark, dark purple on the sides there. And then I've added some rosy strokes coming in. And there is our lightest, lightest bit. 
So I'm just going to try and get, ah, there we go. That's away from the glare. And our lightest bit is in that area. Nice and white there. Okay, there we go. Cool. And that is our lid. Do we have any questions on the lid and how to put it in? Anybody? Okay. As far as it looks good, um, I can then, um, what, what you can do is use that dark purple that you've mixed and we just go over that top lid line again to define it. Okay. And remember, it needs to be thicker at the top, going thinner, 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 thinner to the bottom like that. Right. Yay, we've got a lid. Okay. And um, so now we can actually start moving into the eye. All right, if everyone's ready, I'm going to check for a few more thumbs up. Do we have thumbs up? Ready to move into our eye? Just up. Oh, we've got a few thumbs up. There we go. Some lids. Nice. Yes, drink some wine. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm going to get some more water. <laughs> All right. So the same concept we've just used with the brow, we're going to use with the sides of the eye. Um, we're first going to paint them white and then start adding in a shadow with the purple. So what's really important to remember is that um, we want the eye lid at the top always puts a shadow on our eyeball so if you look at our final piece over here you can actually see that that area down there is much lighter than the top area of my eyeball so and it's because our lid actually casts a shadow down there that's where we're going to paint now okay so you just grab your white and you just fill in and we're going to start with our um, right hand side first because it is a little bit easier as the shape is um, less complicated than the other side with our tear gland so now you just want to go nice and here's also where you want to really start shaping in that iris nice and round okay so we're placing some white down on our eye okay so that's good enough you know um if you don't want to add in the shadow it won't be as um you know predominant you won't really see it but i would say challenge yourself um, push yourself a little bit and let's just add in some blending at the top to create that shadow. So now you can just rinse your brush of that white and clean it on your lappy. And we're going to use that lovely purple that we mixed earlier. So it's one blob of blue and one blob of rose to get this great purple. And now we're going to start at the top here. So you can first do you can go over the line of your eye that you have just to darken that up. And then you can start moving into the eye like that. And I'm just going to lift it a little bit. So there we go. So I'm just adding that in. And now there's too much paint on my brush. So you just want to wipe your brush off to clean it a little bit. 
And then with a dry brush, or you can grab another brush, just want to blend in those little bits like that. Okay. And around there a little bit. And then in the corner of your eye over there. Cool. Because that is where the shadow is going to be. And then we want to darken that top bit again. So you can just once again go over it with your dark purple that we mixed with rose and with blue. Cool. And that same color you can just place here at the bottom of your lid. And a little with just that tiny bit over there. You can blend it in like that. Okay. And at some point you might feel, oh, you've added too much purple. That's fine. You just grab more white and you add it back onto your eye there and blend it back in. So you can just add more white onto your eye. Okay, do you see there on my eye, it's quite clear where I've stopped with the white and where I've began. So I can just wipe my brush clean again and with a dry brush, just softly fold that in just to make that, um, that, <laughs> what's the word? Um, that flow from one color to the other color uh, a little bit, less clear you know you just want it to flow into the other color okay so that's the one side of our eye we're going to do exactly that but on the other side so um i am just going to give you a moment to catch up as i just go over these lines again below the eye with my Purple, nice and dark. There we go. Okay. Cool. Is everyone fine with me to continue to the left side of our eyeball? Okay, seems like it, all right. Um, before I do that, I just want you to note that on your eyeball, the darkest areas is gonna be there at the top in that corner and then here in that corner. And as it moves to the middle, it goes lighter, 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 ding, lightest. Okay, and if you want to, you can even add a little shade there, but you don't have to. That's not important. These are for the people that really want to get into the details. Okay, we're moving on. So we first want to place our fleshy bit in the corner of our eye with the purple that we've mixed. So you um, Lily, sorry oh, yes. to interrupt you. We've got a group that are just falling a little bit behind and have asked if we can please, please slow down. For okay, them. perfect. Yeah. So I'm just um so I'm just gonna continue with going over some lines that we've done before. Uh so for the ones that are behind. This is not a step that is at all going to change your artwork much. So um, yes, for the ones that are in front, you can just keep going over these lines and correcting them, making sure your angles are nice. So you can, with your purple, go over your top lid line over here. So I'm just going to do that. And then also we're going to outline our iris again with our dark purple. But as I mentioned, 
those that are not at this point, you don't have to even do this step. So we've just got a question from Melissa. If you can just explain the white of the eye again with the shading. Just okay, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to explain the white of the eye again. And um, yes, yeah, so for those of you that have missed it or missed the steps, what we do first is we place just the white down in this area. So I'm taking some white and I'm filling it in, filling it in, filling it in. There we go, just in that area. And then I use some of my dark purple and I pull the line at the top here. And with some of that dark purple, I start pulling that into my wet white like that softly, softly, softly. And in that corner. And then I wanna actually clean my brush or grab another dry brush and smoothen that part out where the purple shade meets the white area. And I just wanna soften it out. So at the end of the day, you wanna get your darkest area in that corner and then in the top corner over there. So it's your lid casting a shadow onto your eyeball. Okay, I hope that was all right. Please let me know if, if you missed that and I need to explain it again. All right, guys, while we're waiting, we're gonna do a little bit of self-promoting <laughs> so we can give everyone a chance to catch up. I would like to remind you all, um, if you haven't got your tickets yet or you haven't seen the event that's gone up, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we are hosting an event at Warwick Wine Estate on Saturday, the 6th of March. That is in Stellenbosch. And we will have Kim Moby doing her Vineyards of Summer. Yes, we did it last year, but a lot of people um, missed it. And we thought, why not do Vineyards in the Vineyards for our first in-person event? That will be starting at 10 a.m. and includes a wonderful glass of Warwick wine, as well as some flum kuchen. And if you don't know what flum kuchen is, it is basically a German flatbread or pizza. Ha ha ha, look at you learning fancy words today. <laughs> that sounds amazing, Lauren. <laughs> um, so yeah, those tickets are available on our website and the event is on our Facebook page. So please go check it out. You are also welcome to book a picnic with us afterwards in the lovely gardens of Warwick. And they've got some delicious food on their gourmet picnic menus. Uh, Steve will put the link for that event in the chat bar in case any of you wanted to check it out. And hopefully we will see you guys all in person soon at one of our events coming up because we've missed you guys. And that is my promoting done. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Lily. <laughs> awesome. Okay, everyone, go check out the, um, the link for that Warwick event. That's going to be really cool. And um, yeah, I think let's move on to the other side of the eye. Um, so it's pretty much exactly what we've just done on the right side of the eye. We're just doing it on the left hand side and adding in our tear gland. So we're gonna start with that tear gland. And I feel that my tear gland is like really wide, you know? It's about half of my pupil, which it, I feel it can be a little bit smaller. So you don't have to do this. If you feel that it is a bit wide, mix yourself a color of like a sea greeny color or something that can just cover up the top of there. So I'm just thinning mine out. You really, really don't have to do this. I just feel like mine is too fat and I want to make it thinner. Only we could do this to our bodies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so yes, we are. So I've just kind of like curved that in, made it smaller by adding a sea green on the outer side of that tear gland. And now I'm just going to paint in the outlines again with my um, purple, that lovely purple that we mixed. Yes. 
that one. So what you wanna make sure is that it comes down and a little small <coughs> area in there and slightly curves up and goes into the rest of the eye. All right, if you don't know how to remember, or if you don't know how to mix that purple, some rose, some blue, and voila, you've got it. Okay, and then with that purple, we are now just gonna fill in that entire bit in the corner, like that, all right. Just darkening it up. We will start adding some details to that in a bit. And with that same purple, you can add in that top line and then also cross over that bottom line and even the side of your iris again. All right. And now you wanna make sure you rinse out your brush really properly. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse. And you're gonna add that white in that area. Okay, so we're grabbing some white and just blobbing it down on the left hand side of your eye. And please use your smallest, smallest brush to get into these corners. Other brush is not gonna do it. Okay, like that and curving around your iris. Please don't use the shape, the round shape of your iris. Don't make it straight line here on the side. We want it to curve around like that. Okay, here we go. So we've got our white down. That's the first step. And I'm putting it down quite thickish so that we can actually blend in the other colors into that, especially in the middle area, because that's where there needs to be a lot of white. Okay, rinse your brush, please, please, please. Make sure all the white is off. Um, and then we're gonna grab some of our purple and just mix it around to make sure it's in your brush everywhere. And now we are gonna add once again in our darkest area. So we're gonna start there at the top. And just blend it in like that. All right. I'll hold it higher for you guys to see. Okay, so I am just pulling in some lines there from the top, especially here on the side of our tear gland. Okay. And then a little bit here at the bottom. So we've got our blue, well, our purpley color down. And now I'm rinsing my brush and I'm drying it out or using an, uh, my medium dry brush. And I am just slowly blending in those little bits there. Okay, you don't wanna lose your white, so don't go too far. Right, and I'm just, I just realized my purple isn't rosy enough. I'm just gonna grab more of that. And we're mixing that in over here. Okay, and now also once again, defining that top line of your eye like that and making sure that this corner of the eye is your darkest bit. So you can add even more purple to that. Going in there, coming around here a little bit in that bottom corner. And then there where your tear gland is. Okay. So now we've got a shading of our eye. Hey, hey. And if you haven't done it before, just go around your iris 
create a beautiful circle that is continuing. Make sure that circle is now round. Okay, and stand back, stand back, look at it. Make sure it's good. Okay. Nice. Any questions about the shading of the um, of the eyeball part, the white part of the eye? Anyone? If oh, sorry, Ooh, Lily, I've got a question. Yes, I'm putting my white on, and I can still see blue underneath. And every time I try and move it, it just keeps moving. The white keeps moving, more blue comes out, and then I'm mixing my purple in. What do I do? So I think you can first then place, so Lauren just asked like, if the blue of the canvas is still shining through, even though she's placing the white on, it's because her white is either too diluted, um, but a trick to sort that out is you just put the white on and you let it dry. And then you can put another layer of white on um, that's wet and then that shouldn't be shining through anymore. And it actually links with another way that I wanted to say if anyone is struggling with doing this shading of the eye, um, you can actually paint the white first, let it dry, and then use your purple with a diluted and diluted a little bit. And with like that diluted translucent version of your purple, softly do the shades where you want them. So it's not gonna look as 3D as this technique, but it will do the same job at the end of the day. So for anyone that's struggling <laughs> with, with this um, technique, you can follow the, the other way that I've just mentioned. Thank you, Lily. Cool. Okay, and then you can stand back a little bit. Check out your eye, check out your shades. Is it looking good? Yes, yes, yes. We like what we see. Okay. Now, with that purple, you can, and it's still on your brush, you can just add a few lines. So it's very important that these lines go straight. So from the pupil to that side, and you don't want to do lines all the way like that. We're not gonna do like a little sun all around here like that. We actually want broken lines. So yes, they are going in that angle and that is correct. And it's okay if there's one line like that, but you want that line to stop there and another line to start there and a little bit longer there and over here. So we are, and if you have a friend, please look at them, look at their eyes. And you'll see there's these little, like, they look like little cones in their iris. So, and they're usually lots of different colors. Even if you have brown eyes, there's lots of different browns happening there. And so we're gonna start adding these cones into the eye like that so it's using a purple that is one blob of blue one blob of rose and we are using our smallest brush and we're just putting little lines into the eye at different lengths and spaces bringing them together but also working in that kind of like a beam a, a sunbeam going around 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 your pupil okay and we don't want these lines to be curved they are just straight and they go across like that okay and some of them closer to each other and some of them further away and some of them in the middle and the more you put in it'll start coming together like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift that a little bit for everyone to see. There we go, that's what you wanna go for. You don't want lines going straight from the pupil to the side. 
It's okay if there's one, but the rest get them going in and out like that. Okay. That's at least easy. You can just go cha 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 and it should be done. <laughs> okay. And you can do more around the, the side of your pupil and somewhere with that purple color, you can just fill in your pupil again. Okay. There we go. Any questions about filling in the iris? Anybody? Okay. Cool stuff. So you'll see now your, your eye is already looking like an eye. We've got our eyebrow down. We've got the lid. We've got the sides of our eyeball. Now we're doing the iris and it's getting shape. And I'm really happy. So what we're just going to do now is I would like you to use your white paint again. So you can take a blob out of your white paint and place that on your palette. And what I need you to do is just dilute it a little bit with your smallest brush. Really, really important that this is now your smallest brush. That is the best tool for the job. And to make the brush even thinner, you can turn it around like that. So to see how I'm turning the brush, I'll show you my hand like that to make, give it more of a point. So we want to use that pointy bit of our brush. Okay, if you have a square brush, you want to use the side. I'm just going to use a big one to show you guys. Do you want to use that corner over there of your brush to put in the thin lines? And you're going to hold it with that corner facing down. All right. I'll tell you now what we're doing. <laughs> so we are adding in this little thin line over here underneath your eye where your eyelashes actually grow out of. And this is gonna make your eye look much realistic as well. So you want to add a thin line on top of that lower line that you've done into your eye. Please feel free to turn your canvas. This would be the best way to turn it. If you're right-handed, if you're left-handed that way, because you want it to follow the curve of your brush. And we're just adding in that line. If you're struggling, you can actually leave this out. It won't make much of a difference, but it just adds that little, that little bit of an extra detail that would make your eye more realistic at the end of the day. And you can do that all the way going around here and kind of disappears into your tear gland. So it doesn't go to that edge. It just kind of stops there and disappears into your tear gland. Okay, isn't that cool? So if you have a friend next to you, please look inside of their eye real quick and note those little, I call them cones because they seem like they're rolled up, you know, little in little cones around the eye. So those little lines going around the eye and all the different colors that you see. And then I also want you to note that little fleshy bit at the bottom of the eye going all across where the actual eyelashes are going out of. Check it out. It's really cool. <laughs> okay, any questions on that? Good. Is everyone happy to for me to move along? Is there anything I need to explain again? Do we have irises that are happening and looking like fantastic starry eyes, I don't know, like galaxies? And do we have that lower line? Mm -hmm. Anna, I'm 
only seeing a little bit of your painting, but it's looking really good. Oh, nice. There we go. I'm going to scan through, but is there anyone that wants to show me? If you lift it up quick. Oh, wonderful. Lorraine, that's beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. I like the purples and the yellows coming together. Awesome. To your friend as well. I don't know which one's Lorraine. Daphne, very cool. Oh, nice, Renata. I'm liking it. That lid, wonderful. It's dimensional. Awesome, awesome. I can, I can, it feels like I can feel it. Okay. So, guys, now we're still going to use white with our, um, our smallest brush, but not diluted. Very important for this not to be diluted at this point. And we're just gonna add in a little square corner at the top of our pupil. So in the top left of our pupil, that is where we're gonna add in a little white block. So I'm putting in a little square there and you just put a few lines and it's okay if it's not all the same white. It's actually quite nice if some of that pupil is still coming through. So there we go. And we can even make it a bit, a tiny bit more rectangular. So that's what you wanna pop in there. And really, if you stand back and check out your eye, I'm sure it's looking pretty good. <laughs> okay, because that light bit just gives life to your eye. All right. Um, cool. So we are going to add some more colors onto the inside of our eye. And hopefully you've got some colors left on your, um, on your palette. If not, uh, it's fine. I'm, I'll just be explaining how to mix them again. So our sea green was with what I'm gonna use now, and I still have some left of it. So it's like quite a bit of white. So I would say two white, two yellow, and one blue, all right? And then you just mix that together. I'm gonna to uh, mention it again, two white, two yellow, and one blue. Unless you wanted a bit more blue, then you can add a little bit more blue to that. Um, remember, I added more blue at the end. So there we go, I've got my sea green. And now I'm just gonna add a few lines inside and I can actually dilute that a little bit. And I'm gonna add a few lines on the inside of my eye where we see those cones and those different colors of the eye coming through. And Sea green is quite light, so I would add more of that to the bottom of my eye than I am actually adding to the top. So in the top, just here and there, because remember, there's still a lid casting a shadow down. So there won't be as much of this light color at the top as there is on the inside of the eye. Okay, and have fun with this. Just go ding, 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 ding around, sometimes, over some of that blue that you've already placed, sometimes next to it. And then you'll see it's already coming together. I mean, most of you can possibly stop at this point because it already looks like a shiny eye, um, but we can add more color to that. So I would suggest you grab some blue and I've just now taken my brush and mixed it into my blue, but you can just lighten up your blue a little bit. So it would be your blue, one blob of blue and one blob of white. And now we're just gonna add in between these as well. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a little bit there and it's actually nice if that sea green is a little bit wet still because then we can actually blend it in to each other. I'm just adding more sea green in as well. There we go. And more like a lighter blue. 
So I'm making blue eyes, but if you want to make orange eyes or purple eyes or green, please, please, please go ahead. Don't let me stop you. Um, you can make brown eyes. And yeah, so we're just pulling a bunch of little lines going from the pupil in the angle of from the pupil to the side of the eye. That's the important bit. And I've added some sea green in and now I'm adding in some lighter blue that I've mixed with one blob of blue and one blob of white. And now our eyes coming together. Note that at the top here, I've added more blue. And at the bottom here, I've added actually more sea green. And that's also making my eye um, see more 3D. And what we can do is, I just want to add a little bit more sea green here and over here. And then also note that on this eye, on the sides of the pupil and uh, yeah, around the pupil and on the sides of my iris, it's darker than in between. So that's what we're gonna use our purple for now. So you can mix some of that purple again. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit more rose to that so that it's a bit more like pinky purple, all right? And we can just add some of those lines to the edges of our eye. And note that I'm not doing them all the same length, the lines that I'm putting in now. There's a short line, there's a longer line, and there I'm skipping a few more, there's a longer line, and a few short lines and a longer line. Especially moving to the top, it would be darker. So I add more purple lines to the top there. And we bring that in, ding a ding a ding. All around, we're just doing that short, long, short, long, short, short, long. <laughs> All around our eye. Because if you look at your friend's eye again, you will see that most people have this like dark rim around their iris. And it's really lovely. So we want to paint that in and then a little bit here and there I would firstly go around my pupil just to get the shape right again and then just here and there around the pupil you can add some darker purple going around ding, 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 and some more but softly 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 little lines Okay. And now it should really be, be looking like something. And if you like, you can even add a few more dark bits into the eye, but not too much. So rather don't if you are a bit wary. So I'm just gonna add here and there going in and out, very softly diluted purple going in and out and oh so just to recap that a bit we've added our purple lines in initially and um nice and dark going all around and then we added some sea green which i'm just filling in a little bit more because i want some more of that nice sea green coming through Okay, and then after that, we added a light blue all around, but noting that the top area here has more purple and more light blue, and the bottom area here has more sea green. Okay, and now if you like, I mean, you can, don't let me stand in your way, you can add a little bit. I think this is good enough, but if you want, for those that want to take it a step further, I'm taking that same brush that's just been in my sea green and I'm mixing in some rose, okay? And just here and there I'm doing 
um, lines of that. Okay, so it's a nice lighter purple and I'm just doing it here and there, cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Not much. We don't want to overdo that. Okay. And you can do that maybe with a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow. You can really fill in your eye. But at the moment, that's what you are going for. Okay. And it will come together like that. So um, we've got all our colors in there. Then important is to add in a few white bits. So as you can see in this eye, there's a lot more white strokes that I've added in the bottom than in the top. There's literally one, two in the top, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the bottom. All right. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're grabbing some white again. And you can just mix that and dilute it a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna add just a few lines here at the bottom and please make sure they're different lengths and different widths apart. Like that. And on the side here, especially where your um, little light hits the eye. And then, as I say, just about one, two, three at the top. Okay, and voila, that is our iris. So we've got our lid, our eyeball, our iris. And at this point, it's very important to stand back and make sure, is my iris round? Is it right? Does it look like an eye? Okay. And then we've also added that little bit below the eye over there. And then with that, still that diluted white, you can add just a dot in the bottom corner there of your tear gland and a little curve over there. So I've added just a dot right next to that and a little curve over there. And you can even, if you really want to, just add another dot there. So it just gives your tear gland a bit more shape. It's not so important. So if you don't wanna do that, I would also lighten up that one. Um, it's completely fine, you don't have to do that and I actually want to add a bit more of a rosy color into my tear gland but also not not important for everyone to do so I'm just adding more rose here Okay, cool. We are nearly done, guys. This is like nearly, nearly at the end. We already have our eye down. So at this point, you can actually kind of stop. We've got, we've got an artwork. But now we just want to bring this together. So do you see that my um, lines that were splitting my canvas into quarters are still shining through? I want to take that away a little bit. So what you can do is you can use the same color that you've mixed at the bottom of your um, canvas and just bring that over there. Or we can bring in some more details with what I'm gonna do now. So I'm just gonna check in, is it all right? Can I move on? Can I bring in some yellows just on the sides and put the lashes and then we're done. Are you How's guys? everyone doing, guys? Oh, sorry, really? No, it's good. Everyone fine with that? Can I see thumbs up? There's a thumbs up. Yes, more, Cora, thanks for thumbs up. Lorraine, thank you. Nice, Anna, I see thumbs up. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. 
Okay. Always have someone just sent a thumbs up. I saw that. Thanks. <laughs> cool. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. So now I need you to use a bit of your own artistic intuition. So you're going to stand a little bit back. You're going to look at your artwork and you're going to say, it needs a little bit more of that. And you put your reference next to it and check it out. So what's different on these two is that that light area just below the eyebrow isn't there. So I need to add that in. And then this area underneath the eye is much lighter than this area. So I'm going to add some yellow in there. And then I'm pretty much done. I can just fill that in a bit and make sure the lines of my um, quarters are not coming through. Okay, so let's dive into that. We are going to grab some of our yellow again. So if you don't have yellow left, a blob of yellow and a blob of white. And you can just mix that in with your big brush. We want to use the big brush now. And so I'm just going to add more white to that. You can even add two blobs of white. Be nice to have a nice, nice light yellow coming through. Okay. So we've got some yellow there. And now I, I want to use this yellow to shape my eyebrow. So I'm going to put it in that top area there and first shape my eyebrow nicely. All right. And now I'm going to put a, like a fat stroke down there. Bah. Okay, boom, boom, and maybe a little bit in there. All right, so you can let your brush stroke. It doesn't have to be solid all the way. Let it kind of like um, fade into the sides like that. And I feel like we can add a little bit more of that there. Okay, and while that yellow is still a bit wet, grab some white out of your um jar <laughs> and you can place some of that there just and softly let it flow in and then with that white you can even add some in that corner there and yeah okay with that same yellow that we've mixed it's still over here we're going to add that underneath our eye here so we're placing that underneath the eye, ding, 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 ding. Not covering that nice dark bit that we've got on the side there or that lovely dark curve below our eye, but just working it into our eye there. And if you're feeling dairy, like a little bit of yellow in, in there, but you don't have to do that. So we've got just above, uh, just above our eye, below our brow, with some white in there and then just below our eye here. There we go. Okay. And now I would like you to either use a nice light, light blue or a nice light sea green just to fill in more of the, to bring more of the colors forward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix some white into my sea green. You can mix a lot of white into your blue or you can mix sea green again. So you take some blue, some yellow and some white. Then you get a nice light sea green. I'm actually making it even lighter. Da -da -da -da. Okay, there we go. Okay. So you either be mixing like a baby blue color or a nice light sea green like that. And I'm just going to add that in this curve around here at the bottom of my eye. And do you see my, my stroke is splitting up a little bit. It's not solid all the way. And I'm just bringing some of that into this bottom part of my eye and on the side there below here and then into this area of my eye okay so 
going from the yellow into that. Not too much of this light color. We can even put a bit of a stroke there, going into that yellow. So it's just continuing that light yellow bit that you've got there. And we can even put some in there. And I'm just grabbing some more paint on my brush and we can put some at the top of our brow, Ugh, our brow, not uh -huh. our brow. No, I just want a brow, guys. Okay, the top of our brow over there and then a little bit in this corner going down here and in that area across. So if you're struggling of blending them in and you you feel like you're making too much of a solid line when you put it down, it's fine. Dilute your, um, dilute your paint a little bit by just dipping it into water and mixing that water in to your paint. Um, and then you'll be doing softer lines that kind of fill in and still let the colors below shine through. So you can do that too with most of the colors that you're bringing in. So what you're gonna do now is with, with this light blue or this light um, sea green is you wanna start bringing everything together. And already that is happening here. And I quite like actually the strippiness. You know, I, I've used more solid lines on this picture than I did in this one. So at this point, you can actually leave it like that. I feel like it's good enough. But for the people that want to move more to this style, I'm quickly going to go onto that. So for the quick painters, you can move on to this. So I am now just going to grab some blue and dilute it a little bit. And where I've put blue already, I'm just going to softly bring that over. So that bottom color is still shining through. I'm just bringing that blue over it to blend it in onto the sides. Okay, like that. So guys, this is a very intuitive piece. So it's never, ever, ever going to look the same. Never when you do it. It's in your mood, where you want to put a stroke. So you can do a few of them and it'll actually look lovely um, to hang them up next to each other. So what I'm doing now is I'm just softly doing some nice blue Sh um, shades over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we want to, in this bottom corner, we actually want to remember to put some yellow because that's where the little bit of the nose is actually coming out. So we're going to move over to our yellow again. And just there in your bottom left corner, we're going to put some yellow there. And mine's actually quite diluted at the moment, but I quite like the vibe. And you can even use some of that diluted yellow for your cheekbone that's happening on this side. So if you dilute it a bit and you just bring it in, in that area coming up like that. Please rinse your brush in between colors. Otherwise you're gonna get a muddy, muddy piece of work and you don't want that. So I'm just diluting the yellow again and bringing that in over here at the top. So wherever I have yellow on the sides of it, I'm just putting some diluted yellow to help it blend in to the rest of my picture. Okay.
There we go. And I feel like that needs to be a little bit more. Yes. So your cheekbone goes all the way up just below your eye. All right. So it needs to move up into that area. Okay. So now you're playing around with the colors. You're just making sure they're all blending together. They look fine. It's, um, starting to flow and it goes from darker bits to lighter bits and moves around. And now we just want to define this bottom bit of our eye over here. So I'm going to use my sea green again. And I'm just going to work it in there like that. And I just want to make this line a bit thinner because it is a bit bulgy over here. So I've used some sea green to go around there and just make it thinner. All right. And now I'm mixing some blue with white. Okay. So blue with white over there. And I'm using that color to fill in this bottom here and just blend it into that yellow bit over there. Okay. And you can stand back and check it out, check it out, check it out. Yes, yes, yes. Getting there. Okay. Any questions up until this point? Because we are about to put the lashes down and sign our names and then we are done. How's everyone doing? Guys, if you have any last questions for Lily before we finish the final step, let us know. <clears throat> All right, give us a thumbs up if Lily can show us how to do the lashes. And then, guys, we are done with our class today. Woo -hoo. Let's see. Any thumbs up? Ready for lashes? Yes. Lorraine is ready. How are you guys doing? Everyone else ready? Oh, I'm not seeing any thumbs up. I'm going to give you a moment still, just while I fix um, my bottom lid. So someone has the same problem. Um, while you're fixing your lid, yeah. how about you take a look at mine and tell me what I can fix? Okay. So Lauren has just, oh, look at that. <laughs> Lauren has just given me her picture and it is actually looking really really good i love it it's very cool i wouldn't necessarily fix anything um what do i blend to cover these oh like you the still see your line yeah so i would mix more of this like light blue mm -hmm. and i just work it in there uh, you can even bring some more green in that area and in this area, I would actually just go a little bit lighter because you want that, that lightness over there. So that's nice and dark, but over here, I just bring, I'd make that a little bit more lighter. So the same green you're mixing for here, you can actually use there okay. and bring it together, but it's looking lovely. Yay, oh. go Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I'm also going to fix my um, lid. So... My bottom lid over here kind of got lost in the paint. So I'm just adding it back in, making sure it's there. And you can see it. Da, da, da. And then also my side, my bottom side of my eye here in that area has disappeared a bit. So I'm just going to grab some more rows and mix that into some of my purple over there okay, to make a nice light purple. There we go, you guys can see that, there we go. And I'm just gonna add that in that corner over there. And I might even be naughty and add some white to that. 
see what it does. <laughs> Ooh, that much? There we go. Okay. That's cool. I'm going to grab more of that in that corner there. Nice. Okay. I think we're ready for the lashes. So rather do less lashes than more lashes. And rather go like smaller than longer because if you have a too much of a fat brush, if you do them small, it's still gonna look fine. But if you do these long curvy things and um, it's not done thin, 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 it might look, it might mess up your picture. Because at this point, I'm sure you guys are all like pretty proud of your pictures and, and you can definitely be, um, and you've got it down. You know, there's, there's, you've got the eye, you've got the eyebrow, you've got the colors dancing around it. It's looking good. So the eyelashes are just gonna add that extra level. All right, so if you wanna stop at this point, it's completely fine. If you just wanna add like little eyelashes going up like that, all right, I'm gonna do it with water so that some of you can see it because it does show a bit there. So you can do little lashes like that. That would be completely fine. Um, but for the ones who are up for the challenge, you want to use your smallest, smallest brush. And we're using that wonderful dark purple that we've mixed, one rose, one blue. Um, and we are diluting that a little bit with some water. Okay, you don't want to dilute it too much because then it's going to just disappear. So... Um, I actually think I put too much water with mine, so I'm just gonna add more paint to that. There we go, okay. The reason we're diluting is because we can really, really, really make a thin line. Then I would suggest practice this some way. So if you wanna turn your canvas around and you wanna first on that side, practice how thin you can do your line, or even there, how thin you can do that. That's how thin you want it to go. You do not want a line like that coming out of your eye. It's gonna mess it up. Okay, so we are gonna add in a thin line going, and I would turn my page like this, okay, or my canvas, because my hand curves, actually I would turn it like that because your hand is going to curve much easier in that direction. Okay, I'm feeling it. Yeah, anyway. Mm. Okay, so we have, we are going to start with our first line. The first curve goes from that corner, slightly curving up. All right. So there's not much, the, uh, the ladies that like doing the wings on their eyes, you'll know how to do this one because it's going to follow that wing, all right? So slightly curving up there. And then I'm just going to do a next one so that you can see how they change. This one curves a little bit more up, like that. All right, I hope you guys there showing you glaring a little bit, I'm sorry about that. Um, all right, so this is the next one over there. And then after that, do you see it's starting to curve more, curve more, curve more, okay? Because you don't want a straight line coming out of the eye like that. No, 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 no. Okay, also note, I'm turning my canvas around and around because it's easier to curve like that. So this one would go there and can just rise just above your lid. And over here, be a next one. More like that. Okay, so it's just going above your lid. Then these ones, 
I'm just gonna turn this like that. Are like nearly straight up. There's one here in line there that would be just, just straight up. And then from that point, they'll start curving out this way again. But I usually let one cross that over like that. So you let it cross and then they start curving out to that side. All right, and you can always go over them again. So rather start with your pain more diluted and they go shorter as they get closer to your tear, tear gland. Right, so only here there's a bit of short one, ding, 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 there they go, they disappear. And nearly like a finger after your iris, all right. Okay, and now I'm just gonna start adding more. So curving still in that direction, starting at that dark bit of your eye. And we're adding in more of them. Okay, some of them, if you feel they need to be more blue, like I'm feeling, make them more blue. If you feel they need to be more rosy, make them more rosy. Okay, and we can just add some more coming in here. But coming out, out, out. And some of them can crisscross a little bit over each other. So we've got some coming up here. Oh, my brush isn't working with me today. Right, there we go. Ta -da. You'll be able to see the ones over your um, light spot on your I laid quite clearly. Mm, there. Okay. Here we go. And check it out. Stand back a bit. See, are they curving in the right directions? What are they looking like? Do they need to be darker? Do they need to be more purple? Okay, cool. So I've added them in and now we're just gonna add a few little lashes at the bottom. Not necessary because we don't usually see them on the eye, but they are just in exactly the same, but much smaller. So we are curving out to the sides there. And as we get to the middle, they go more straight. And they are much softer, much smaller. And you can even do this with a diluted color as well. I would suggest it needs to actually be diluted. All right, and we are just curving them out. the sides and they get longer as they move to the right side of your eye and they actually come out of that little white bit below your eye okay and you start in the middle and move out to the outer side of the eye then you'll get that shape of it going thicker to thinner all right, and there you have your lashes and everything with it. So with that same color or your favorite color that you used, obviously mine was sea green. I don't know if anyone realized that, but it was. And I'm going to use that to sign my name. This is the most important bit. So I'm going to dilute my sea green a little bit with water. And... 
I am just going to sign it in my right hand corner at the bottom. So there we go. Oops. Sea green is too light, I realized. So use a color that will actually show on your color that's underneath. So maybe like a darker blue also. Okay, or a purple or a rose, whatever you like. And voila, there is your artwork. I'm so, so happy that you guys spent Sunday with me and created your own beautiful artworks. Um, a huge round of applause, guys. Please put your mics and your cameras on. A huge round of applause for Lily Brannon. Thank you so much, Lily, for once again being with us yeah. and hosting this for you. Oh, thank you, Lily. Oh, thank you, Lily. <laughs> thank you, everyone, awesome. for joining us once again. And if you wouldn't mind, all of you putting on your camera, you can take a photo. Ooh. So if you can hold up your uh, your beautiful colors of the soul. <laughs> Mine's the, not quite oh, as the okay. like ladies, but <laughs> I'll hold mine there. Wait, there. <laughs> Beautiful, look at that. Oh, thank you. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, look at this. Lorraine, you guys are nailing it. That's awesome. Amazing. Wow, I'm seeing some awesome stuff. <gasps> look at all these eyes, guys. Great. If you click gallery mode and look at everyone's eyes, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. Angeline, Byrne, and Sharon, we'd like to see yours, please. <laughs> That is my family, so I'm allowed to be Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, Michelle and Mia, awesome. Nicole, that's looking so good. Crystal, lovely. Amy and... Awesome. Is it Alida? That is really beautiful. And Renette and Ilza and Lynette. Oh, guys, who did... Oh, Daphne, that's great. Awesome. Guys, let's try to get a full house here. Everyone. Great, Ooh. great, great. Natasha looking really good. Guys, these are so brilliant. Wow. Awesome. All right, guys, everyone's camera's on. We're going to take a photo. Are you ready? Leonie, Leanne, <laughs> Sharon, Willem, Naomi, Susan, Jennifer, Amy. Let's get all your pictures in there. <gasps> Jacqueline, that looks amazing. Look at that eye. Nice. Nailing it. Awesome. Oh, Cara, you guys, that's also looking so good. Angeline, well done. Nice, Burn. Where's Sharon's? Awesome. Here's some more eyes popping up. <laughs> nice. Who is that Sharon? Oh, cool. Sharon. Yeah. Sharon. Sorry, sorry. Sharon. Looking good. And Maureen, well done. Very, very cool. You guys, you didn't even need me. Look at your stuff. <laughs> this is amazing. Yay, guys, this is awesome. Okay, on the count of three, we're going to take a photo. So big smiles. Let's see your pictures. One, two, three. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. One, two, okay, one. pop out behind your camera. three. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> oh, so awesome. Amazing, guys. Well done. All oh, give yourselves a big round of applause. It was so amazing. Well done.